and you know, this something going to be uh, we'll, we'll make more mention, but there is um, uh, this book, Priest Block Two Five Four Eight Seven, is available at our religious catalog. Let's go to another question here from our studio audience. Where were you from? Uh, Birmingham. Great. Good to have you back here at the studio. Thank you. And you even have a copy of it already. I do, from yeah. the religious catalog. Um, <laughs> I have a question. Um, Father Bernard says that in early October 1941, they were ordered, uh, the guards ordered a separation of the Polish priests from the German priests. And of course, they didn't know what was going on, but they thought perhaps the Pope had spoken out and the German bishops had uh, issued a protest. But later on, it turns out that the German priests seemed to be treated better than the other priests. And I thought, well, if the the bishops had spoken out, wouldn't they treat the German priests worse? The, the Nazis were very, the Nazis were very, very unpredictable and capricious in the way that they. Uh, they, they dealt with priests. The reason that they separated people and they sometimes treat people more sympathetically, they wanted to create division and resentment among the Catholics and other prisoners who were there. They didn't do this because out of the kindness of their heart. Uh, by the way, the, the questioner, and thank you for answering that question, uh, she, raised, she points out a very important element of Father, uh, Bernard's me uh, Father Bernard's memoir, and that is that every time the Vatican spoke out and protested against Nazi atrocities, there were savage reprisals inside the camp. He says this several times. He said, uh, so one, one morning he says, we woke up and we were dragged out and marched out and we were savagely beaten. Some people actually died because of this. Why? The rumor had it that it was because of the Vatican and Pope Pius XII was in fact speaking out. Now the reason that is important is that, as you know, one of the big lies that the Pope was silent, the Vatican was silent, the Vatican was anything but silent. It was speaking out continuously. That's one of the things I document in the anthology of the Pious War, if anyone wants to go for, for evidence on that score. But Father Bernard's memoir is especially important in this, in this witness because he shows, and he, was a, he should know because he was a prisoner, inside the camps, every time the Vatican protested against Nazi atrocities, there were terrible reprisals against Catholics and the other prisoners. And because of that, this word of this got back to the Pope eventually. And because of that, he had to measure his words. He still spoke out, but he had to be extremely careful the way he did it because of these terrible reprisals inside the camp. But if you want to defend Pope Pius XII, one of the best ways to do it is to read uh, Priest Block 25487 because it provides in an indirect way a witnessing to the truth about the, that the Vatican did speak out, but because of it, the priest suffered. Well, let's go to Rudy, who's calling us. Hello? Hello, Bob. Hi, where are you from? Uh, originally Philadelphia, living in Las Vegas right now. Great, and what's your question? Yeah, Bob, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question and a comment. Uh, there is a pastor out of San Antonio, uh, quite hostile to the Catholic Church, and has published, uh, recently published two books. One is uh, Hitler's Pope, and the other is Vatican City in Babylon. Now, I've come across and have conversations with some non-denominational uh, Christians, uh, and they, they throw these points up into my face. Well, how, you know, how do I go about answering them? What do I say to them to, to correct the information, the false information that this pastor is putting out? Great question. Now, do you know Hitler's Pope, this book? Uh, oh, certainly, yes. That was a book published about 10 years ago. In fact, I was on... Um an EWTM program with my good friend, Professor Ronald Richlack. There have been many, many studies. That book has no credibility whatsoever. In fact, the author himself has since backed away from his thesis. The funny thing is that he's backed away from his thesis now, at, whereas people out there who have read the book, not realizing this, are still out on, and about calling Pius XII Hitler's Pope. Pius XII was anything but Hitler's Pope. He was Hitler's deadly enemy. He was involved in a plot to try to overthrow Hitler. Can you imagine that? A lot of people don't know about that. There have been books written about this. Also, in return for that, Hitler himself had plans to kidnap and deport and possibly even murder Pius XII. So here you have so-called Hitler's Pope, a man who was actually uh, involved in a plot to uh, overthrow uh, Adolf Hitler and remove him as the head of the German regime. And then you have Hitler, so, so diabolical in his hatred of Pius XII, trying to uh, perhaps engage in a kidnapping scheme to get rid of P Pius XII. Clearly, they were deadly enemies. Yep. And, and so and I think that's uh, something, what would be one of the best books to learn to refute well, uh, Hitler's Pope. Well, first of all, I would suggest to get a good background, read the Father Bernard book, because that describes what the Catholic Church was up against. Once you buy and read that book, if you can afford it, hey, I'll send him a copy of these books myself. This sounds like an important, you know, struggle is going on there. I'll, I'll be happy to get his name and address, and I'll send it to them. A priest block, read that book, uh, read a book by my friend, Professor Ronald Richlach. Sister Margarita Marchion has 
you know, half a dozen books that are very important, gathering information. Rabbi David Down has a book precisely titled The Myth of Hitler's Pope. And if you want, you can get uh, my, uh, the, the anthology that I contribute to heavily. It's called The Pious War, Responses to the Critics of Pius XII. It came out a couple of years ago. What's the rabbi's name again? Rabbi David Dallin. He actually is one of the co-editors of, of the anthology that I contribute to heavily called The Pious War. He published his own book called The Myth of Hitler's Pope. And, and I think that, that that's going to be a, a particularly good book for you to have because it's not a Catholic trying to defend that's the right. Pope. That's right. This is a rabbi who would, you know, is just going to be dealing with the facts, and he's going to deal with the myth of Hitler's Pope. That's the title of the book. Check on that, as well as check our EWTN religious catalog, because we have a number of these books, including the Priest Block book, at Religious Catalog. We'll get the, a phone number and a website for that before the show is over. Okay. All right, let's go to another question from our studio. Sir, where are you from? Here in Alabama, Father. Great. And what's your question? I first of all just want to comment, say, Bill, thank you for all you've done these many years. You mentioned about a historical consciousness, you and Dr. Rishlak. And I was going to say, Father Mitch, you asked about books. His book, Righteous Gentile, which came out a couple years ago, a wonderful book as a refutation to a lot of these charges. Bill, I was wondering if you could give us an update with regard to the beatification, potential canonization of Pius XII, since that seems to be looking more hopeful. Yes, that's a very, I'm very excited about it. Let me address that. By the way, my friend Professor Richluck is now, I believe, going to update and uh, revise his first book, Hitler, the War, and the Pope, which I highly recommend, as well as Righteous Gentiles. It's a great book. Great, great, ma magnificent book. All the books that we we're talking about today, I hope, are good books. Um, to answer your question, the good news is that, yes, Pius XII's cause, which the critics of Pius XII said was dead and forgotten, is on track, it's moving forward, and the latest is this. Last year, last May, the Sacred Congregation for the Cause of Saints voted, unanim after years and years of study, that there was 3,000 words of documentation dealing with all these Christians, refuting them, testifying to the goodness, the greatness, the charity of Pius XII. Last May, uh, in, a, in, a, in a report by the Sacred Congregation for the Cause of Saints, they took a vote of all the, con the, the, the authorities who head the congregation and who vote on these things. You know what the vote was, Father? Kakwa? 13 to 0. A clear, that, that is the equivalent in baseball terms of Don Larson, the Yankee pitcher, pitching a perfect game in, the world, in a World Series. Okay? The, the Yankees, aren't they a baseball team? They're, they're a great baseball no, team. Yeah. They're a great baseball team, and Pius XII is, is, is worthy of the New York Yankees, and vice versa. <laughs> I'm a but Yankee. I'm, the White Sox I'm, I'm a Yankee. Okay, though, I'm, I'm a Yankee. I'm a Yankee fan. So please forgive me. No, okay. well, we'll think about it. <laughs> I don't think you're sorry yet. But yeah, but that is that 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 is a a, a solid thing. That this is a very clear uh, decision. And, and, and I think let it's me. Very important. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to update. Uh, right now, as a result of that recommendation, uh, the congregation has sent formally their recommendation to Pope Benedict XVI. And right now, on his death, we await for the decision of Pope Benedict XVI. It is believed that he will sign. But Catholics, if you're interested in promoting the cause, we have to contact and, you know, really raise our voices and send Pope Benedict XVI the message. Email him, send him letters, say, we want this man canonized. We want him beatified. We think he's one of the great popes of the 20th century. He, in many respects, he reminds me of Pope Benedict XVI. Very scholarly, very humane, very intelligent, magnificent. People don't know the real Pius XII. When you get to know him, you love him ever, ever much more. But exactly. I believe he will sign the decree, but he, uh, like you know, the, the Pope goes at his own schedule. He has his own time. They t these things take a lot of time, but eventually, I believe Pope Pius XII will in fact be declared a saint. And, and I, I think uh, uh, one, one of the things that uh, will more, just as importantly, if not more importantly, is going to be that uh, we we have people standing up when the critics open their yaps once more. They'll, they'll open up their mouths and start criticizing again uh, with, falsely. And we have to stand up and not let them get away with this nonsense again. Well, the Catholic League, my good friend Bill Donahue of the Catholic League for Religion and Civil Rights, they actually gathered together a petition, and this is another good news about the cause of Pius XII, and they sent the Cardinal Secretary of State, Cardinal Bertoni, and His Holiness, Pope Benedict XVI, I think there were something like 15,000 signatures saying, we support the cause of Pope Pius XII, we want you to know, Pope Benedict, that we want you to sign the decree, declare Pope Pius XII to be venerable, then we will wait God's confirmation, if it be his, his will, through the Holy Spirit, to confirm this through a, a miracle, at which point we would then beatify Pius XII, and then another miracle, we would then canonize him. So, you know, these things take time. 
uh, the Holy Spirit has its own timetable, mm -hmm. but I am convinced it will it will occur. But we need to make our voices known and send this message loud and clear to Pope Benedict XVI. We want him canonized, Pope Pius XII. Yes.